I'm joined by Mayor of Norman, Bria Clark. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, ma'am. Yeah, glad to be here. Right on. Uh, so I wasn't really paying that much attention uh, to the conversation around Norman as it relates to football until I read a quote from you in the Norman transcript where you said you did not want to be the hair from Jaws. And I, <laughs> I giggled at that because I'm like, yes, she gets it. She understands. And I, I wanted to know if you, uh, if you would unpack that for me. Uh, sure. You know, if you're, what I was referring to was that scene where they're more concerned with keeping the, the beach open because of the local economic impact, which, you know, our, our cities, cities around the world are suffering right now. But I, I didn't want to put the economy above the value of human life. And obviously we're not dealing with a, a giant great white shark unless you want to name that giant great white shark uh, the coronavirus. So we're all having to weigh whether we are going to, you know, risk having these community events that we love, the traditions that, that identify who we are as a community, uh, and also support the local economy or do everything in our power to try and combat this virus so we can eventually get a hold of it. So that's kind of the, the struggle there. And I'm in a variety of, of mayor networks and I said that in a quote, but we often say it to each other. <laughs> Just don't be the mayor from Jaws, you know, like that's, that's everyone's goal. No, and it's, it's a real goal, and it's one I, I thought that most people would be on board with, and I'm surprised at how much pushback I get on this, but, you know, like for instance in Jacksonville, they're arguing about whether or not to have the Republican uh, National Convention, and even in, in your city, you had to make a decision about Norman Music Fest, which is a thing that I look forward to every year that did not happen and could not happen. And have you gotten a little bit better read on how to approach these topics in these situations, knowing that that is one of the bigger, let's call it off-season events for Norman that you had to cancel? Well, fortunately, I didn't have to cancel it. Okay. You know, I've tried to thank so many of our organizations for mm -hmm. being proactive, which I'm incredibly proud that they are. It mm -hmm. just shows how serious all of these organizations are taking it. I mean, it's everything from the Medieval Fair mm. to Norman Music Festival to Jazz in June to Summer Breeze to Movie in the Park mm. to the OU Spring Game to OU Graduation. Like, I could go on and on <laughs> about all of the things that are huge economic drivers but have, have had to have been canceled. And, again, I'm grateful that I haven't had to make any of those calls. Okay. You know, that they, they have been, that's been done by the organizing entities um, – SuterCon was supposed to be in Norman this summer, and every time that I've seen someone reschedule or cancel something, I try and reach out and thank them, because it's not an easy decision. Nothing in life is easy right now with the <laughs> coronavirus, and I think we're all doing the best we can, and what I encourage businesses and organizations who are making these tough calls, I encourage them to remember that they're creating massive customer loyalty right now, mm. because it's clear that they're putting... The, the health and safety of their customers, clients, constituents above, again, tradition or, or the economic benefit of having the event. And I, I think that's really special. So often we focus on the bickering and the, the skyrocketing numbers and, and the, the, the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I think we need to try and focus more on the good stuff and the, the, the shiny humanity that we are, I'm still seeing. And, and that's what gets, keeps me staying positive. What have you learned about your community during this time? Ooh, I've learned a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've learned that uh, through, you know, various organizational type events, we came together quickly to make sure needs were met. You know, when we shut down, we had... Uh, thousands of people in a Facebook group, I think it was called the Norman Community Relief Page, that would go pick up groceries for you, that would deliver masks. That, I mean, it was it was beautiful. So we're, we're quick to help each other. I've also learned that, you know, emotions are high on both mm -hmm. sides of the many complicated issues we're dealing with. Because let's be honest, it's not just coronavirus that uh, is getting people excited. Um, but the coronavirus does create an issue and a roadblock with dialogue because it's so much more powerful and impactful 
to have a face-to-face conversation. And we're at a point in the world where it's really not safe to do that, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. So um, Norman residents, I've always said, are passionate, educated, and engaged. Mm-hmm. And I think everything I've seen for the most part throughout the last few months further confirms that. And not all of it's been positive towards me, but I didn't <laughs> run for mayor to make a city bunch of, you know, full of friends. I, I did it to <laughs> do what's best for the city. And all of my decisions have been backed by data, science, medical professionals, research. And so I, I think we're all doing the best we can. And I would just tell anyone who's, who's feeling a little stressed out, uh, empathy. Try and put your, yourself in other people's shoes. With that, with that kind of frame of mind, one, uh, thank you for that, because that's really encouraging to hear from someone who is an elected official, I got to tell you. It just it makes me feel good. Uh, but I also wanted to, to point to, uh, you, you talked about the residents there. You're going to welcome back uh, a bunch of college students, and you're the rare mayor of a college town and a big college. What are some of the challenges that you're facing? Oh, my Lord, there's a bunch. Um, I will uh, give a shout out to my counterpart Mm. in Stillwater, Mayor Joyce. Uh, He and I have actually connected and, dare I say, bonded throughout all this because you're right. You know, the the mayor of a college town faces wholly unique issues. Mm. Often the local economy uh, revolves around having 20,000 extra people in your community spending money for nine months of the year not to mention any events that the university may hold for us. It's obviously football and other sports that we're national champions in. Mm. Uh, And the arts. We have an amazing music theater program. I can go on and on and on. But the thought of having 20,000 young people from Texas and all over the nation return to Norman, it it does make me nervous. Mm. It does. I, not to mention that the university is a political subdivision of the state, so mm. I can't go in there and mandate things and cancel this, and this is how we're going to do it. Luckily, the University of Oklahoma has been a wonderful community partner, and I get phone calls not just from their government liaison, but from the president, mm. from uh, the director or the VP of student life when I have questions about how some of that's going to work. And I think that's the best one can hope for in a situation where I really don't have a lot of control. But uh, I miss the young people. If we're, you know, on again that positive perspective, it's an energy in the town when the when school starts, and we want the economic benefit, and not to mention just the again the events and the culture and diversity that those thousands of young people bring. So we definitely want them here, but we want everyone to be safe. Mm. So uh, I appreciate OU's efforts, and I just hope it's going to be enough. You know, I was a lot more positive a month ago about the return of students than I am now because look at the skyrocketing numbers. Mm. You know, so it's it's definitely a challenge. I know what we all want, but we're also in a pandemic. Mm. And, you know, you can't always get what you want. And the great news is this is just temporary. It may be the weirdest academic year ever, <laughs> but it will pass. And we will get back to normal. I just think we all need to be patient. And again, don't be the mayor of Jaws, right? <laughs> well, and you are the mayor of, uh, I believe, the third or fourth largest city in the state, which get, doesn't get enough publicity in that front because, you know, I, I moved there for grad school, uh, what, 10 years ago, and I stayed for six years, and I got to see the ebbs and flows of what it looks like to be an adult, as I put it, when you are going to work as opposed to when you are a student and what that looks like during the summer versus what that looks like during the fall. And what you mentioned is also what gives me pause. I mean, there's there's a million people or so it seems all over Norman from, you know, uh, fall semester and then you get a little break in winter and then you come back for your spring semester. And I'm thinking, all right, how are we going to convince college age people to try to do what's in the best interest of all of us as opposed to what's in the best interest for themselves. And I I even uh, was thinking about Ole Miss and that they held Rush in June. And I was thinking, surely not. And apparently that's just been a thing that's been going on. 
So knowing that you have that kind of partnership with the university and that you're both looking at for the self, uh, the, uh, the best interest of both the citizens and the student body, um, how much of this is you having your head on a swivel and how much of this is, okay, we're going to ask everybody to wear masks, we're going to ask everybody to socially distance and things that you know you should be doing and things that are just going to come up? Well, I mean, that's a, a great question. Uh, I do want to give credit to young people, and I think they often kind of get, get you know, discredited for, uh, I don't want to say self-centered, but I mean, that's just the age. We all remember being in college. It's, you know, we're going to live our best lives, but they wear masks, you know, like I, I see our young people embracing facial coverings way more than some of our maybe more experienced in life residents who they have a pattern and they have rights and this is what we're going to do. So the facial coverings, I'm not so worried about the social gatherings is what I'm worried about. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to, that's going to be a real issue. But I, again, the university does reach out. They ask for my opinion, my thoughts. They're involved on my emergency management task force. And when they were considering having an in-person graduation in August, um, they told me their safety measures. And I said, that's great, but I can't support this. And I know I have no power over whether this happens, but here's why. Mm. And then they ended up canceling it. And I don't think it was like my magical phone call that made that happen, but they did hear me and I appreciated that. So as long as we have that open line of communication, we're, I think we're going to do the best that we can. And it, it'll, there's so many factors at play right now. Honestly, um, I don't know what the answer is. I've got kids in elementary school and middle school. So I got, you know, we got the K-12 to look at as well. It's complicated. Um, but I think the clear line of communication and having as many safety measures and precautionary measures in place as possible is our best bet right now. What are the things that keep you up at night as mayor? Because I'm asking that question knowing that you sound like a person who is willing to ask as many questions as possible, to delegate as much as possible, and try to let folks figure out for themselves the right thing to do without actually having to force anybody to do anything, which is the way I would hope that most things get done. But still, you're the mayor for a reason. Yeah, you know, we were the first to, to have the facial coverings ordinance because mm -hmm. it clearly people weren't doing it on their own account, and, which is unfortunate. I'm, I am a optimistic and hopeful person. Mm -hmm. But uh, what keeps me up at night is there is no timeline mm. for this. There is no, okay, Bria, you just got to make it through September and everything's going to be fine. That is, it's hard to provide and share hope with my residents about the future when there's nothing I can point to. We don't know when a vaccine is going to be together. Uh, we don't know what what's going to happen this fall. We don't know. I mean, it's, so many unknowns and I again want to share my my optimism and hope with the people of Norman but it's hard you know the, the most I can say is our our best days are ahead you know <laughs> that's definitely one of my one of my lines is hey it can only get better like <laughs> it can't get much worse but then I think I have that feeling in my gut that it could get worse you know losing one resident is unacceptable we've lost 23 here in Norman Mm. And, uh, you know, some people who think this isn't a big deal. And then I know people who've lost family members because of this, who will have medical debt that it will take them a lifetime to pay off. Mm. You know, the residual health effects of having it, even if you've recovered, could impact. Some. We don't even know what those are yet. So I think it's just the unknowns. I, I like detail. I like facts. Mm. <laughs> I like data. And there's just not a lot of that right now. And not to mention, we don't know what's going to happen this fall, so we don't know how that's going to impact uh, our economy in the long term. Mm. And so even once this is over, we're going to be feeling the COVID-19 effect for a long time. So I think those are, those are the things that keep me up for sure. Have you been able to step foot in Norman Regional at all? Uh, have I been, like, 
I haven't asked. I haven't had to go. Okay. So there's that. Um, <laughs> there you but, go. But uh, I, <laughs> I have regular communication with Norman Regional. We were doing a weekly uh, live interview on Facebook. And sadly, this week, it's usually Wednesdays at 2, I was told all of the doctors were too busy, mm. which is not a good sign. Uh, but they're a great community partner. You know, they're transparent in their numbers. Um, I love that we have our own health system. Mm. I think that's pretty cool in a pandemic. Um, but, yeah, you know, I, I think they've been very, very helpful. I've, everything I've done is to try not overwhelm the hospitals. You know, we know that people are going to get sick. We can't stop it. But we have to be able to manage it. And, again, the anxiety of the the fall is, well, when the flu returns, if it's bad now, what's it going to be like then? Mm. So. I want to leave you with one question. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to nail you down on this one. So you get one restaurant to pick in Norman one, and you cannot pick Taramara's or Van's pig stand. Where are you going? Mm. I'm going to make some restaurant happy and a whole bunch of other <laughs> restaurants unhappy. Um, let's see. Oh, there. Is it a date night? Like, Help me narrow it down. Is it a family night? Is it a date night? Is it I get away for 30 minutes to myself? What are we talking here? You have to impress a person of interest coming into town for one night. Ooh, wow. Okay, well, I'll tell you the very first place that I was taken to okay. when I visited Norman when I looked to law school. And I've actually held a conference on campus, and one of our social events was at this place because it is so Norman. DeMont. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. What do you That's order at right. DeMont? Very first restaurant. Very first restaurant. Well, what do I order? A yeah. squirrel, of okay. course. I got it. I got to ask. I got to ask. Man, okay. Yeah, because you're, you're more likely to catch Coach Switzer out there. You're more likely to catch – Norman Elite out there. No, that's a good place. Uh, I'm going to throw some in here so that uh, nobody feels too singled out. So uh, Ray's Barbecue was the first place I was taken, and it was gorgeous and beautiful, and I loved it, and I love Ray. I also wanted to uh, blue across the street from the courthouse because I ended up going in mm -hmm. and out of that place a little, little more often than I thought I might, quite honestly. Yeah, uh, you know what I miss the blue wine tastings. They are having them, but I'm I'm personally not comfortable doing indoor dining right now. So I flat out asked them if they would do like a to go wine tasting. How fun would that be? No, it's worth it. It's totally worth it. And that's the part of this that I've been really encouraged by, fascinated by, is the ingenuity on display. So yes, blue, do a do a to go wine tasting. I think that's a great <laughs> idea. Uh, Mayor Clark, thank you so much for taking some time to do this. I know you're busy. Yeah, sure. Well, thanks for helping spread the, the message and the experience of, of an American mayor right now. And uh, yes, we are the third largest city. So it's, it's been it's been real. <laughs>